Tensions do seem to be on the rise between Russia and Israel, with Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov saying all sorts of things. But let's find out more about this. Let's go into deep uh, and talk to my special guest who's in Tel Aviv, Mr. Tom Gross. Tom, thanks for joining me here on A News. Good to see you. Now, this uh, rhetoric seems to be uh, quite out of the blue. What sparked this, uh, this sort of dialogue between Russia and Israel? Well, actually, um, first of all, um, Israel has been moving away from taking the more neutral stance in the Ukraine war already for some weeks. It's been more and more critical of Russia. It's helping Ukraine in various ways. And this has greatly annoyed the Russians because they were hoping that Israel, like other Middle Eastern countries, would be more neutral. But uh, what specifically started it was some outrageous remarks yesterday in an interview with Italian television station by the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, in which he essentially said that Hitler may have been of Jewish origin, and he also said the biggest anti-Semites were Jews, and he also said the fact that uh, President Zelensky of Ukraine is uh, Jewish doesn't necessarily mean that it's not a neo-Nazi government. And Israel responded saying these remarks were grotesque and uh, a distortion of history and so on. Let, let me just unpick them for a second, okay? First of all, let's be absolutely clear. Okay, Hitler was not Jewish in any way. This is a myth, a conspiracy theory that was invented in 1953 by Hitler's former lawyer, Hans Frank, who was a Nazi, and he claimed to muddy the waters that Hitler's paternal grandfather was Jewish. Historians have looked into it. There is zero evidence of that. Okay, so Lavrov was very, very wrong to bring up even the possibility that Hitler was of Jewish origin. He was also totally wrong to suggest that the government in Ukraine is neo-Nazi or supportive of Nazis, or Zelensky is supportive of Nazis. Having said that, um, there is this quiet among some Jews and Israelis and indeed Russians that the West is ignoring the fact that there are indeed some neo-Nazi elements still at large in Ukraine. There's the Azov Brigade, which is an openly neo-Nazi um, wing within the Ukrainian military. There is the fact that Stefan Bandera, who was a Ukrainian wartime collaborator with Hitler during the, during the Holocaust, his birthday was made a national holiday in Ukraine in 2018. There are also squares and streets named after Ukrainian wartime collaborators with the Nazis. So on the one hand, absolutely, this is not a neo-Nazi regime. The Russians are totally wrong to say that. On the other hand, maybe Western and the journalists and leaders should say, look, it's important to denounce the, the um, renaming of squares after wartime Nazis in Ukraine. One doesn't preclude the other. But a wider point I'd make is that the Holocaust has nothing to do with this terrible war in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. The war is, is potentially a war crime in itself. Russia was unjustified in um, invading Ukraine, unjustified in killing civilians. There have been reports of massacres and rapes and so on. And uh, Rush Russian leaders, military and political, may end up um, on trial for war crimes at the end of the war. But that doesn't mean it's the Holocaust. No, the Holocaust, of course, I'm sure your viewers know, but just to reiterate, right. is an industrial murder from the north of Norway in the Arctic yeah. through to Libya. The Nazis went all over Europe hunting Jewish children and babies. There was a, a, a baby girl who was only half an hour old, murdered in the gas, gas chambers. She was born as her mother got off the train to Auschwitz, and they sent that baby, who hadn't even got a name yet, to the gas chambers. Yeah. There is no other historical event that can compare to the Holocaust. And I, for one, wish people would stop comparing it, not just the Russians, but even some uh, Jewish journalists and even some Israeli leaders. Ukraine war is a terrible war, but it's got nothing to do with the Holocaust. Indeed, Tom. Interesting how the Western, well, all of Western media are sort of reporting, it, trying to find a connection uh, to the Holocaust. The Holocaust, obviously devastating. Uh, we don't need to be reminded of. But 
Let's look at how the relations now in mean, Ukraine and Russia, sorry, I beg your pardon, Russia and Israel have somewhat had a sort of, Israel has, as you said, a very sort of standoff um, approach to, to Russia and Ukraine. It hasn't helped Ukraine in any way with, with any military aid. Uh, and at the same time, it hasn't actually imposed any uh, sanctions on Russia. But are we likely to see that all change now because of these, you know, outst uh, with strange remarks from uh, F uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov? Yes. Well, first of all, actually, Israel has been helping Ukraine, perhaps not as much as Ukraine wants, but it has been for the last six weeks, Israel's had the biggest field hospital inside Ukraine of any foreign country. They have saved hundreds, maybe thousands of treated uh, injured Ukrainians, civilians and fighters. So they've done a lot. They've, Israeli doctors have gone into the east of Ukraine and risked their lives there, sure. um, helping treat injured Ukrainians. Then Israel's also supplied some low-level military equipment. Um, what Ukraine has asked for is the Iron Dome, which is the missile shield right. that Israel uses when rockets are coming from, from Gaza and Lebanon towards Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. And Israel has not supplied those to Ukraine, but that's partly because Israel doesn't have very many left after the conflict last year between Hamas and Israel. And Israel doesn't, it takes months to manufacture these. It's right. not like Israel's just got lots lying around spare. But also it takes about six months to train people to use them. So it's not a realistic possibility of, of uh, sending these rockets to uh, the Iron Dome. And, and also the Iron Dome is designed for small, short-range missiles of the kinds that Hamas fires towards Israel. It's not designed to stop much more powerful cruise missiles that the Russians are using in eastern Ukraine and elsewhere okay. in Ukraine. Um, the reason that Israel has been somewhat neutral at the beginning is because the Russian military is in Syria, which borders Israel, and the Iranians still have a big presence within Syria, the Iranian Revolutionary Guards and others, and Israel has been taken out Iranian Revolutionary Guard targets and missile uh, convoys and weapons depots in Syria, and Russia has in effect been allowing Israel Israel to hit these targets in Syria. And Israel is concerned that if it angers Russia too much, Russia would allow Iran to make a build-up of weaponry on Israel's borders with Lebanon and Syria. So that is what is of concern to Israel. Yeah. But Israel has actually denounced um, uh, Russian actions in a peed, the foreign minister has called them a war crime and so on. It has been quite strong. I think some of the Western media reporting criticizing Israel has been a bit unfair in that regard. I might also add that almost every other country in the Middle East and Asia has been less supportive of Ukraine than Israel has. Sure. You know, Israel's taken about 25,000 Ukrainian refugees, which is a lot for a small country like Israel. Um, to specifically answer your question about yesterday's remarks, yes, it looks like Israeli-Russian relations are heading downhill fast. Uh, far from apologizing this morning, as uh, Israel asked the Russians to do, the Russian Foreign Ministry have put up a statement that basically doubles down on what Lavrov said yesterday, um, although I read it carefully in translation from Russia. I have to say, some of what the Russian Foreign Ministry says is correct. I speak as someone who's, some of whose family were murdered in the Holocaust in Ukraine, in fact. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, it's, that, you know, uh, that's, it's true. That's the, that's that the Israel back neo-Nazis. Sorry, I beg your pardon? I'm sorry? So that's the Israel sorry, back. Yeah. Are you saying that the, the, the Israel back, there are Israel backed neo-Nazis in Ukraine? No, 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 no. Israel does not support neo-Nazis, right. okay? The Ukrainian government's not neo-Nazis. That is absolutely not true. What they are saying is that Israel hasn't been sufficiently critical of the Ukrainian government for rehabilitating some wartime Nazis. Okay. And obviously they should be critical, Israel, but this is a side issue compared to the war that's raging, which is the priority for everyone, is to try and end this war, or try and stop Russian aggression. What I think the Russians were saying 
is uh, yesterday the Israelis say you can't be an anti-Semite if you're a Jew. Well, unfortunately, as the Russian foreign ministry pointed out, there are some Jewish anti-Semites, just like there are some black people who are racist against blacks or some gay sure. people who are homophobic. It doesn't stop. Uh, you know, there's always a fringe within any minority that kind of, for whatever psychological reason, sides with the enemy against itself. Mm -hmm. So Lavrov and the Russians are pointing out some examples, and in that sense, those examples are accurate, but they're deflecting. They're deflecting from the fact that the, the regime in, the, in the, the government in Ukraine although not perfect, was democratically elected. They had an election in Ukraine. Yes, there was some corruption in Ukraine. Yes, there are some neo-Nazis in Ukraine. Yes, democracy in Ukraine is not perfect. But you know what? Democracy in most uh, European countries and the United States and so on is also not perfect. Okay. And there are also some neo-Nazi fringes in the United States and Britain and other countries. So, you know, they are singling out Ukraine as not perfect, and yes, it's not perfect, but that doesn't in any way justify this invasion. Um, on the other hand, as I pointed out, I'm also unhappy with Western media and Western leaders. Yeah. All right, before, before, before we go... invoking the Holocaust Indeed. to basically say that Putin had been done. Yeah, if, we, we could go on for ages. Sorry, can I continue? Or? No, 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 one second. Uh, so what, I, what I'd like to sort of focus on right now is how Israel has sort of reacted. Yes, it sort of, it's called its um, ambassadors or the Rus in Russia, and it's sort of perhaps closing ties, but is, are we likely to see a more aggressive approach from Israel because of these latest uh, sentences coming from Lavrov? Well, they're making noises, but I don't think so, because strategically, Israel is worried about a weapons build-up in the Russian-controlled parts of Syria, right. and, and also Hezbollah bringing those weapons through to South Lebanon. That is the priority for the Israeli government, to stop offensive weapon capabilities and rockets on the borders with Israel. Right. And also there is quite a large Jewish population within Russia, and Israel doesn't want to get too much on the wrong side of the Russian government. So I suspect there's some quiet words being said, but uh, I don't suspect that, you know, Israel is going to start uh, sending a large amount of weapons like the British and Americans and others are to, um, to Ukraine. No, I don't. I don't think it will be a major change in policy. Great, Tom. It's been great talking to you. 